we go. Hello. Um, <clears throat> back once again at the Genesis Designs bench, and here we're going to continue with this RCM CR42 today. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, sneaked a little bit of work in and I've finished building it. Uh, it was very, very easy to build. I can't complain. It went together like an absolute dream, um, as I think you can probably see. Uh, no filler at all. Is your upper seam there? This is an upper deck piece which joins in the corners there. There's a tiny bit of filet of putty in there just to fill up the little gap. There's the underneath of my thin down fairings and whatnot. And I've already sprayed the, the underside, as you can no doubt tell. I've already sprayed the underside with RLM76. And on this occasion, simply because it's what I have to hand and not because of any particular preference, I've used Mr. Paint. A lot of people rave about Mr. Paint. Um, I'm not one of them, honestly. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Mr. Paint at all. It's nice. It's nice paint. It goes on nicely. But in fairness to every other paint manufacturer in the world, it's not really any better than any other lack of paint, in my honest opinion. And on top of that, it doesn't really offer very good value for money, in my opinion. Uh, this this uh, bottle is, what, 30 mil. So technically, yes, it's three times as much as the Tamiya, but you're going to thin this Tamiya probably 70% thinner to one part paint. So you're going to get more paint out of this than you will this. And this doesn't cover all that well. I've basically done two models with this now, this one and a 262 which is in the bedroom and I've nearly used it all. And this is sort of six quid or so, not all that easy to get hold of either. It is nice paint, <coughs> no two ways about it, it is nice paint. Uh, you can spray it straight from the jar, I tend to thin it down a little more if I'm doing anything detailed but this, this that you see here, this is straight out of the bottle, straight through the airbrush. Um, yeah, it's nice paint, but it isn't any better than any other lacquer paint on the market, uh, really. The Tamiya lacquers, the Mr. Colour, every bit as good. There are other makes, obviously, but those are the ones that I primarily use. So, that said, 76 is on. So the paint job we're looking to do on this is, is kind of exciting, if you recall. Here we are, here's the picture. At first glance it looks quite complicated and you find yourself wondering what what on earth is actually going on. What's actually going on is, in my opinion, and I've pieced this together with evidence and conjecture, it started out looking like this. The factory applied camouflage scheme essentially was this. It's then been handed over to the Luftwaffe and they've gone, well we want our colours on that. And they've literally slapped a bit of RLM 74, 75 and 76 over the top of the previous camo. But while doing so, they haven't covered all of the camo. There are still spots of green in this sand colour showing through. Uh, which is kind of what makes it so interesting to look at, I suppose. Um, so I thought, okay, what are the colours? We all, we all know RLM 74, 75 and 76. I'm sure everybody's got their favourite matches for that. But what about the Italian colours? Well, ICM recommend for the green, Tamiya XF61, and for the brown, Tamiya XF52, which is their dark earth, effectively. So, I did a bit of research, and the colours that actually used were, can we read this on screen? Probably, yeah. Apologies to any Italians. Nocciola Chiaro 4. That's the brown, and verde oliva scuro two. That's the green. So all of the green and whatever that means. Um, <laughs> I looked up on IPMS Stockholm, which uh, the Urban's colour chart, which are uh, which are fantastic. They've got all the colour schemes down to man on there, with some suggested uh, popular paint manufacturing matches. Uh, that chucks up H310 from the Hobby, Hobby Colour range and XF27. This is H310. I'm going to use Tamiya XF59 
because yes it's slightly different but it's very slight and this is cheaper and easier to use so xf59 for the green xf27 also known as black green or dare i say rlm 70 for the green it's a very dark deep dark green nice actually and compared to xf61 which was the recommended color it's not a million miles off as you can see uh, 52 though, not so sure about that. It's quite a lot different from the sand. Anywho, how do we start on this then? So I've got 76 on. I've not done anything else to it. It's um, literally, I've sprayed that on. I put a couple of coats on to get coverage. Gave it a real light uh, rub with good old Trizac. Where's my Trizac? There he is. Real light rub with my Trizac sand in the bunch, just to get any, you always get those little tiny fibres and bits and bobs of crap and everything. Just knock those out and then one more quick coat over the top and that's what you get. A lovely, good, solid, hard, satin finish. It's top notch. So that's on ready to go. Normally, <coughs> I tend to paint things in roughly the same order that uh, the, the real the real job would have been so normally I'd go in with the green now then I'd go in with the sand and then I'd start putting a little bit colours on top of it <laughs> for the sake of sanity I'm, I'm going to go the other way around I'm just in a minute going to put the brown splotches on first and then I'm going to colour in around them with the green and as I get on and do that I'll explain the reasoning behind it in the meantime that's all be quite delighted by this stub winged little beauty. It's really quite comical without the, without the top wing. It's quite reminiscent of a GB. Um, probably not quite as tubby as a GB, but uh, very cool looking without its top wing, I think. Indeed. Right then, XF59, desert yellow to you and me. Please excuse me, I, I am drinking a cup of tea as well. I don't want that to go cold. So the XL59 I'm going to apply with my Revolution CR. See in the silver videos, this is a 0.5mm needle airbrush by Water. My particular one is somewhere crazy, somewhere around 12 years old. It's still going strong. I'm going to put the desert sand splotches on with that. First off. So as usual, start off with some thinner. So it's Mr. Colour Thinner, which I've just, I just decant into this little dropper bottle for ease. And I've put some into the colour cup. Some. Next off. I'll stir up the desert yellow. I did stir it earlier, so I shouldn't have to take too long about this. And I'm going to simply tip some of that. This is already slightly thin because it's been used a few times before, and I tend to put the leftover paint back into the jar. Stick some of that in there. This is not too it's not too critical how this mix comes out because I don't need to be super accurate. Which is why I'm doing it this way around. In my experience and I know other people will will differ, I find that where freehand work is concerned if you work from the dark colour to the light colour, I find that the lighter colour overspray seems to show up more on dark colours than the opposite. So if you start with the lighter colour and then freehand the dark colour onto it, the overspray doesn't seem to show up all that badly. Um, whereas on the other way around, it seems to me to show up as a, as, as a kind of a highlight really quite nicely. So, trick is here, I'm going to use this paint diagram is a rough guide 
and I'm simply, simply going to cut some spots in these rough positions using, I've turned the um, extractor on, so I'm sorry if that does come through and it's a bit off putting, but I do have to think of my health a little bit now and again. I'm going to turn the pressure down a bit on the mat valve just so that I don't blow everything all over the place. And I'm just going to apply swatches. They're not neat, they're not lovely. In the rough places that I see them on this diagram. Easy as that. I'm not too worried about the shapes at this point. I'm literally just looking to get some blotches on. Don't want to take too long about it, obviously, because if you're watching, I don't want the video to be three hours long. Got my picture, nice one. I could do with issuing a buzzer to everyone who's watching so that every time I go off camera someone could go Eah! and remind me to come back with this picture. If anyone wants to copy this method of application, this would be a fabulous time to practice your, shall we say, modelling techniques. Because there's no fear here, it's we're, we're just we're just smashing it on. Let's see. Being Tammy acrylic, um, the paint does cover exceptionally well. And this is straight on the bare plastic, I should know there is no primer on this, there wasn't any primer on this. We'll talk about primer some of the time. So subject in my opinion most of all this okay splotchy nice right then let's do this part obviously I can't see the bottom wing on this on this diagram so I'm just going to make it up now try as I did and I did try I couldn't find a single picture online anyway. I don't have any books with Fiat CR 42s in them. I couldn't find any photographs of the scheme I'm going to do. Which is not a situation I normally like to find myself in, to be honest. Um, I do prefer to have something to work on. Yeah, you get the idea. Being a bit more careful here because my RM7060 mark sort of goes in an angle from the wing to the towel plane, but I will draw that back in afterwards. That was also over the paint in the day. I'm not too worried if these splotches look a little swatchy. Paint coverage isn't perfect, I'm not bothered. The vast majority of this is going to get covered up by subsequent drawings don't agree with themselves, so you've got to love it.
No, at the front here, where the end, uh, at the back of the engine cell, I've already painted the dark green in there. And then when I've masked it, I don't know if it really can show up. But I've just, I've used the open cow flaps and I've stuck uh, foam. This stuff. This is the packaging you get in Edward, sort of brass in bits. Cut that into slivers and just inserted it down that back edge to stop paint going in. Same underneath, you can see it a little more easily because it's got some paint on it. Uh, the exhaust pipes have got some liquid mask on them, same as you can see on the tape here. And at the front is just a piece of tape stuck to the inside of the cow room. Because all we're doing putting ground blocks Got 16 minutes already, victory. Right. Okay, let's leave that there. You can use the other airbrush anyway, so I don't need to uh, stop and clean that one. So, this brown paint is dry now. So, what I'm going to do Give this a very, very, very quick, very gentle rub across with this trizac. And the reason I'm doing that is to collect all the overspray, which you can maybe see. You can see how brown the, the, water's, the water is. I'm literally just polishing off all the overspray on the bare plastic. If there's anything we can do to lessen the creation of a gravelly paint finish, it's worth doing. Just carefully, carefully dry it off. It's just standard ordinary cheap kitchen roll. It's quite good for this kind of thing because it's quite soft. The blue roll of the type that you get for your garage, which is what I also use, is it, great for mopping up paint and, and cleaning up and what have you, but it tends to scratch paint quite easily. So what you can see if you look closely here is that where the top of the ribs are, ribs are, I've knocked the paint off, so all I'll do now is just carefully push those bits in a little bit. I'm not worried if the paint is patchy, but I'd rather it was least somewhat okay. Because I only just touch the little areas, I'm not creating the big overspray that I lost before. Nice one. Now, let's switch tools. Ooh, okay. This is the water CMC Plus or Custom Micron if you prefer. And the Custom Micron is a very different animal than the Revolution. It's... Just get rid of the from it. This has a 0.19mm needle, which doesn't sound like a lot less than 0.3, but it really is. Makes a big difference in its use. Now, it would be tempting to think, to assume even, that Getting hold of one, an airbrush like this will automatically mean you can do really fine lines without any trouble. That isn't really the case, unfortunately, because airbrushes of this type tend to be much, much more finicky uh, in their use. They're much more difficult to set up right, they're much more difficult to get a nice paint mixture for, they're much more difficult to use, frankly. Um, you have to be a lot more accurate with your paint mixture, air pressure, everything. So if you can't, get a good result with something like this, buying a more expensive airbrush isn't going to solve your problem. You must just practice more. 
<laughs> and popular opinion maybe, but... <clears throat> to use through the, the custom micron brush. This is a brand new jar. I added some a small amount of Mr. Colour Thinner earlier. Already so it's slightly thin but you're talking probably five percent, nothing much. I've got some Mr. Colour Thinner in the colour cup here. And I'm going to add a bit of green. But not much. Bubble, bubble. I'm also going to mix it with the paintbrush. See what that looks like. Shampoo. <clears throat> Put the lid on. I've sprinkled paint on far too many models not to use the lids on these things now. Okay, let's get a neutral colour background. Our spray. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to spray around these beige dots in a random way. See that this does take a little time. And what can work quite well, and honestly, it is the way that I'll finish the rest of this once I shut the video down, is to have the green paint in both brushes if you have the luxury of two, two airbrushes I'll mix some green and I'll put it in here so that I can go around the spots with the fine brush like so and then fill in the gaps with the revolution is much quicker Another good uh, practice piece for those of a nervous disposition towards freehanding because most of it's going to get covered up. What I'll do, I'll finish this little bit of the wingtip and then I'll show you what happens next. Or I'll tell you what happens next.
the reason I keep splurging on the paper here is simply to clear the needle off. When you're spraying very light amounts of paint like this, even if you use lacquer paints, you will get a little bit of paint building up on the end of the needle. And as that happens, you'll find that the same uh, trigger opening won't produce any paint. You need a bit more paint, a bit more air to overcome that aerodynamic inefficiency on the end of the needle. Uh, and by splurging on the tissue, you wash it away basically. And this is where these kind of acrylics and lacquer paints are immeasurably superior to the water based style of paint because they, they create great growths on the end of the needle and the only way to clear that off is to pull the end of the uh, to pull the paint cap off the end of your airbrush and wipe it all off. It gets super tedious. Super tedious. So you get the idea, we're basically colouring it in just like you would with a felt tip pen. No great amounts of science involved, and this is what you end up with. So basically, once I get to this point over the entire surface, what I'll do is very, very carefully and very gently hit it with this again. For similar reasons that I did before. Doing that will just even down the surface just that little bit. Any bits of overspray on the beige will get knocked off. Any bits of crap in the green will get knocked off. And you get this. Now before I go any further, once I've got the whole the whole model like that, before I go any further with with the other colours, I will overspray the whole thing. with X22. The X22, you'll see me use this all the time, it's thin with Mr. Colour Thinner, about one to one, oftentimes even more than that. I will simply put one coat of that across the whole thing. And the reason for doing that, excuse me, is it will seal this all in and it will provide a barrier, a barrier layer between this and the next coat of paint. So that if, for example, I had sprayed that over the brown models before I started putting the green and I decided I'd gone a bit too far and I wanted to um, rub away some of the green paint. I can rub away some of the green paint with a little bit of Trizact or a little bit of uh, Abrolon and not necessarily take the brown with it because it's got that barrier layer of clear between it and the green. So it's called an intercoat when you, when you uh, use it on full size things in, a, in custom painting world it's an intercoat clear. And it's there literally as a barrier to seal one layer of work from the next and it gives you that little bit of room for error should you need it uh, to help you out if you make a mistake. I'm not saying I'm going to make a load of mistakes but these paints aren't the most robust so it does make sense to do it. Okay, right, I think that'll do us. What are we on? 30 minutes. Yeah, that's plenty for one bit, isn't it? What I'll do, I'll carry on with this. Um, and I'll come back to you with part three when I've done all that. I've got the green, the brown and the RLM76 all sorted out to my satisfaction and x 22 and it's dry again. Then we'll come back and we'll start putting the Luftwaffe overspray on it, which I think might, might be quite good fun and quite a good watch. All right then. So thanks very much for watching, those of you that are here, and thanks for those of you that will visit in the future. Really appreciate your custom. I hope you're enjoying the series. And I hope it's everybody's last day at work and you're all getting a bit of time off for Christmas now. So until the next one, probably in the next day or so, I'll see you there. Ta-ra for now. Genesis out. <laughs>